All right, we have the Shield TV Pro. I'm going to show you how to install RetroArch. First thing first, you want to go to the Google Play Store. Go up to search, type in RET. Here we have RetroArch. What you want is RetroArch Plus. Go ahead and install. Next thing you want to do is go up to Apps. Go to RetroArch, hold the select button, which is X for me. I'm using a PS4 controller. Add to favorites. Go back to the main menu. Scroll all the way to the right. Hold X. Select move. And push X again to select where you want it. Now let's go into it. Here we have the Ozone menu. You do not like this. Click circle. Go down. Select settings. Go all the way down to user interface, go down the menu, Ozone, you have four options. First up is GLUI. Select, back up, go to menu, select, go down to quit RetroArch, go back in. This is what the GLUI looks like. Doesn't really look all that great, so select right, right, you're on settings, go down, to user interface, go back to menu. Now let's see what RGUI looks like. Select that, back, go to menu, go all the way down to quit, quit, go to retro arch again, and this is what it looks like. You don't like it, go down to settings, go down to user interface, menu, now XMB. This one is my favorite. This one's my second favorite. Now go to quit, go back in, and here's the PS3 menu. Next thing you want to do, go online updater. Update all your stuff. And go back. Next thing you want to do is go to settings, go to input, Scroll all the way down to hotkeys. Go to menu toggle. Here's where you have to select to be able to go back to the menu while you're playing your game. What I like to do is start and select. But since I have a PS4 controller, I just have to pick the big middle button. So I'm just going to go with none. All right, next thing, we're going to be doing the icons, these little badge things. Go to settings, go all the way down to user interface, go to appearance, scroll all the way down to the menu icon. One I like is retro system, but let's see what the other ones have. One's monochrome inverted, one's automatic, one's inverted, Monochrome, Flat UI, Retroactive, Pixel, Neoactive, Systematic, Dot Art, Custom, and back to Retro System. So his Retro System. His Monochrome. is automatic automatic inverted is monochrome flat UI Retroactive, his pixel, neoactive, systematic.
his daughter. Custom is what you had, I guess. And back to retro system. For me, I like the retro system. All right, you don't like your background? We can change that. Go to settings, go all the way down to user interface, go to appearance, and this is where you could have your shader. <clears throat> all right, here's the ribbon, simplified, ribbon, Simple snow, snow, buka, snowflake, and off. And here's the background that I have. If you want a background, go all the way back up, go to background image, go to your storage, your one with numbers, and this is for your external hard drive. Select your hard drive, go down to where you have your background. For me, I have it in RetroArch, go to background, and select. That's all you have to do to have a personalized background. All right, so for this next bit, we'll go back to settings, go to user interface, go to appearance, scroll all the way down, turn the shader back on. If you don't like the color, you could change it. Output green, under C, Volcanic red, dark, light, plain, morning blue, sunbeam, lime green, Pikachu yellow, cube purple, family red, flaming hot, ice cold, Midgar, legacy red, dark purple, midnight blue, golden, electric blue and that's it so for me I'm gonna keep it this on for now simple snow all right and that will be it for the color now I'm gonna show you how to change your time clock first thing go to settings go all the way down to user interface go to menu visibility scroll all the way down to you get to style day and time you have all these options to pick. For me, I like the month, day, year, and so forth. Next up is achievements. And yes, you heard me correctly. You could get retro achievements. First thing up, go to settings, go to achievements. Select on. And you would want to go to retroachievements.org to make your account. Put your username here, put your password here. Now, hardcore mode is where you play the game legitimately like you would back when it first came out. Earlier boards, if you want to compete. Challenge indicators, it will show you a challenge that you are able to get, but it will show on the screen, and you don't want that. Rich presence, send detailed play status to retro. Achievements website, you want that on. Achievement badges will pop up telling you got an achievement. Unlock sound. I just don't have it. When I tried it, it was really bad. Furbos mode, it will tell you about your achievement, that the game can have achievements, so it'll have that on. Automatic screenshot. It will just get the achievement once you get it. It won't give you the detail of said achievement. It will just tell, show you that you got the achievement. Encore mode, if you got an achievement before and you're recording a video to show how to get the achievement, you want that on. Now I'm going to show you how to load a game. Go load content, go down to storage, one with the numbers, and this is for your external hard drive. Now go to where you put your games. I have my games in NES retro achievements for NES games. Let's Pick Final Fantasy 1. You have several emulators to use. I'm going to go with this one. It says I'm logged in. Tells me how many achievements I have. I have 0 0.26. It's going to get this 
achievement really fast. Do your hotkey to get to the menu, go down to achievements, win your first battle. And here's all the other achievements you can get in this game. <laughs> 